as one of the salihin, one of the righteous who saw the Prophet view many years later. When the mawalid started happening, when the mawlid amal al mawlid and the, when these blessed gatherings started happening, he sees the Prophet ﷺ dreams and he tells the Prophet ﷺ, these are the gatherings of the moment. What did the Prophet ﷺ tell us? And we know in hadith, sahih, sound hadith, مَنْ رَآنِي فِي الْمَنَا فَقَدْ رَآنِي حَقَّ فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَا يَتَمَثَّلُ Whoever see me in a dream has truly seen me. The shaytan can never impersonate me. So when this righteous man relays this dream, relays this dream, and he said he saw the Prophet what he said is haq. What did the Prophet tell him when he described Amal al mawlid He says, Man fariha bina farihna jah. Man fariha bina farihna jah. Remember those words. They came from the Prophet in a dream state. He said, whoever is happy for us, we're happy for them. Who rejoices because of us, we rejoice because of them. We rejoice because of them. And that comes in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Mushrik, Mu'adi lil Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His own uncle, Abu Lahab, a year after the Prophet passes away, Sayyidina Abbas sees his brother, Abu Lahab, in a dream. He sees him in a dream. And in the dream he sees, he asks him, what is your state? And he said, pain and difficulty and torment. And even though his uncle, he rejected the messenger. And he has no nessa back to the messenger because he rejected it. He said, pain and torment, he said, except for one day, every Monday, every Monday, Allah subhanahu wa makes it easy for me. Why? Because when Muhammad was born, I was happy. I felt happiness and I freed the waver. I freed my slaves the waver. But that one moment, that farha, because of the birth of the Prophet, that one moment of happiness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eased the pain and Abu Lahab. What about you and I? What about you and I? We're sat here feeling happy. What do you think Muhammad is feeling the Barzakh now? What you, how do you think he's feeling right now? He's told about you and I. He's told that you and I are sat here right now. The angels carry that news to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do whatever you want to do. Do whatever you want. Do khair or shar. Do whatever you want to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees your deeds. And the Messenger will see your deeds. And the believers will see your deeds. Whilst he's in the barzakh, our a'mal are presented to him. Our a'mal are presented to him. And if we show any sign of happiness, if we show any sign of happiness for him, undoubtedly he will be happy in the barzakh. And when you come into the barzakh, don't think he doesn't forget. You come into the barzakh. You want to meet Muhammad in the barzakh? You want to meet him in the barzakh? Because if you go into the barzakh and the first soul that you meet is his soul, Sa'ad, you're saved. If you keep on doing these things that make him happy, you go into the barzakh, he will remember you. He will know you. He will know you. He will know you. So be happy for Muhammad in But don't, I will finish with this. Don't be a right real loser. The loser, the khasir, is the one who when Rabi al Awwal goes, he stops. He stops. Your connection with Muhammad is not one month or one day. Your connection with him is every single moment. And we'll relate to you a story and then we'll finish. Abu Yazid al Bistan, Arif Billah, one of the greatest of the knowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he's a young boy, when he's a young boy, he goes to his mother and says, How can I see the Prophet? That's the question of a young boy. How can I see the Prophet? And he's, he grows up in the houses of the righteous. That's why they're asking those questions. How can I see the Prophet? She gives him the advice that we should all take. She said, send salawat upon him. Follow, follow his sunnah. Follow his sunnah. Call to his way. Do those three things, you will see the Prophet. Send salawat upon him. Ittaba'a sunnah. Follow his way. And call to his way. If you do that, you will see him. A while later, Abu Yazid al Bistami comes. Abu Yazid al Bistami comes and said, I saw the Prophet in a dream. Allah. Allah. But she, she's not subhanAllah. She's not saying that. She says, in a waking state or a sleeping state? She said, in a sleeping state? What else? She said, all women see him in a sleeping state. 
even now you go to the house of Muslim, the old woman comes and says, I saw the Prophet in his dream. Nothing special, it's special, but there's a higher maqam, there's a higher rank. Like the real heart that's connected to the Prophet and sees him in a waking state, not in a sleeping state. The sleeping state is for the average believer as a connection. And we know that because in the hadith al Bukhari, the Prophet said, Whoever sees me in a sleeping state will see me in a waking state because the shaitan cannot impersonate me. So any Muslim says, I saw Muhammad so I in a waking state. Unless he's a liar, you believe him. Unless he's a liar. So Abu Yazid al Bistam, his mother, is saying, Waking or sleeping state? Sleeping state? Nothing. That's what old women, the Ajah is the old women, they see that. So he says, How do I reach that maqam? How do I reach the point where I can see him in a waking state? And she said to him, Carry on what you were doing before. Do the salawat, follow the sunnah, and call to his way. And a while later, he comes back and says, I've seen him in a waking state. But even then, even then, she says, What does she say? Now you've taken the full, first footstep in being a man. The first footstep. You and I are not men according to her judgment, unless you've seen him in a waking state. That's, that's kamal al ittisal ma'an nabi But that only comes, not once a year you turn up in the mosque and you do something, that's a loser. That's a loser. Every single day you remember him. The salaf is salih. Some people are going to tell you they didn't celebrate. So every single moment of their life was celebration. Every single moment of their life, they did salawat every moment. They followed him in every single breath that they did. They called to his way. What more celebration than that? What more celebration? Even though they didn't gather in this one, although they even did that. We have cases where they gathered and they sang poetry about the Prophet They sang poetry about the Messenger. In the presence of the Messenger, they celebrated him. Every single moment of theirs was a celebration of the Messenger. Anybody just thinks, I'm a muhib, I'm a ashik because I come on the 12th of Rabiul Awal. You're a loser. You're a loser unless you come and you have that connection every single day. Fulfill the sunnah, bring it into your life. Bring it into your life. Go away and take a simple sunnah of the messenger. One simple sunnah, smile all the time. Smile all the time. That's Muhammad Smile all the time. The Sahaba said whenever we saw him, he was only smiling. Even though he had humum al ummah, you and I can say, I've got problems in my life. Prophet carried humum al ummah, but he was there saving the whole of humanity. When he was in private, mutawasil al ahzan, always in a state of grief, out of concern for souls that are going into hellfire. Not personal problems, he doesn't have personal problems. You and I get stressed and depressed and anxious and so on. Not him, sallallahu His concern is for the fate of humanity. But when he met you, he smiled all the time. So if we take away from this gathering, Let's learn to smile. Alhamdulillah.